is this 14-year-old boy? Joe Phillips is missing, and tonight his mother tells 7 Eyewitness News she fears he may have been trapped inside the Lockport factory, wiped out in a five-alarm fire. That fire roared for hours in the center of a neighborhood in the city's west side. still burning in some spots tonight. Look at the flames lighting up the night behind this home on Stevens Street. This fast-moving fire forced the evacuation of hundreds of people across nine streets in Lockport. They were all told to leave their homes, and tonight that evacuation order is still in effect. 7 Eyewitness News anchor reporter Jeff Russo is live at the scene in Lockport tonight. Good evening, Jeff. Yes, good evening, Ashley and Keith. Yes, uh, still an active scene, very active scene here in Lockport. I wanted to get to the very latest from officials that we just spoke with just a short time ago. They now say this fire is under control and contained. That is an upgrade in status for this massive blaze from late this afternoon. But although that is under control and now contained, the evacuation zone, like you mentioned, is still in effect for over 200 homes that have been evacuated on nine streets here. That's partially because of the wind that is has picked up here tonight in Lockport and is pushing the remaining smoke from this fire behind me back into the neighborhood. So that evacuation zone does remain in effect. It will be reevaluated re throughout the night. Now, Governor Cuomo is also now calling on state agencies tonight to help control the damages here in Lockport and also to try and help find a cause which has not been announced as of yet. That investigation is ongoing. Also, we now know the fire covered four buildings in this area and several firefighters suffered from heat exhaustion yesterday. As you can imagine, 70 pounds of equipment battling this massive blaze and temperatures pushing 90 degrees. Now, this all started 6.45 or so yesterday, about 23 hours ago. More than two dozen fire departments, 200 firefighters responded to this. The Niagara County Department of Health taking water and air samples tonight. It says people were told to evacuate because they were most at risk for smoke inhalation here in Lockport and these neighborhoods here. Now, they are continuing Continuing also to monitor the water quality, health officials say people in the area can expect to smell burned tires for days, maybe even weeks. You can smell it here tonight, but that odor poses no health risk this evening. Tonight, though, this investigation is taking a troubling turn. I'd like to bring in now 7 Eyewitness News reporter Josh Brazan. Josh, you spoke with the family of a 14-year-old boy who is missing tonight, Josh. Yeah, Jeff, and the family very nervous, very upset, and understandably so. 14-year-old Joe. Phillips. He's been missing since yesterday, and his family tells us that he may have been inside one of the buildings when they caught fire yesterday. I spoke with his sister, and she says that nobody has seen or heard from Joe since yesterday at about 5.30. Joe's family says he was last seen with two of his friends. Nobody in the family is sure where Joe might be, but investigators say someone may have been inside the factory when it caught fire. Joe's mother says that now she's waiting for crews to let her know if it was her son. Investigators aren't providing any names at this point. There, there may be uh, somebody inside the building at the time of the fire. Um, we're actually investigating that right now. Um, there are reports of it. Um, the individual who obviously I'm not going to give the name, um, there has been uh, speculation that uh, this individual is in the building and he has not been heard from since. Again, investigators wouldn't say who that individual might be, but the family of Joe Phillips tells us they are still waiting for crews to be able to get inside the fire area. Until then, they won't know for sure if Joe was there yesterday or not. Joe's mother, Ann, telling 7 Eyewitness News, nobody should have to go through this. And obviously, if you've seen Joe or know where he might be, his family is desperate for any news on his whereabouts. And Jeff, they're just holding strong, hoping for some good news tonight. Surely our heart and our thoughts are with our, that family tonight, Josh. Thank you for your reporting this evening. All right, we wanted to show you this as well. This is an exclusive look at what is left of the inside of these buildings tonight in this massive complex. These are pictures from inside the burned-out factory. And again, that fire continues to burn here more than 23 hours later. And I'll tell you what, if you walk around this community, and this was last night when I was here as well, you didn't have to walk far to see people coming together, bringing food, bringing water to firefighters, trying to help each other, including the 200 homes that have been evacuated in a community that has certainly been impacted. Ed Riley has been out here all day, and Ed, this is just everybody coming together trying to make it work in this time of crisis right now. Well, Jeff, this fire has impacted the lives of hundreds of people, both residents and firefighters. It is truly a community-wide event. But as we've seen so many times here in western New York, when there is a crisis, people pull together. 
It's pretty hot down there, but it's hot everywhere. Everyone's doing their best trying to keep cool. It has been a very long, nearly 24 hours as firefighters from three counties have battled a massive blaze that broke out in the High Tread International Tire Recycling Plant. But adding to the stubborn fire is the hot, humid weather. The guys are really exhausted. Debbie Seeloff was worried about her husband, Lockport Assistant Fire Chief Mike Seeloff, so she came to the scene with supplies. He needed um, a change of shirt and some socks because he said they were soaking wet, so I brought him some. But there has also been a huge outpouring of support from the community as people have brought food and water to help the hardworking and exhausted crews. Everybody's pitching in, and I think that's really nice. A 9th Street area around the fire scene was evacuated starting around 9 p.m. last night. Pat Crancelli is in the zone and took this picture last evening because the fire was so big that it looked like it was directly behind his garage. You couldn't see down it. You couldn't see the fire trucks. Cindy Wemmett went to a hotel but spent the day with her kids at a community pool, waiting to find out when she can go home and check on her pets. So describe what's life been like for you for the past 24 hours. Crazy, crazy, crazy. Evacuation centers were set up, but most people found other arrangements. However, the Lockport Salvation Army is still offering to help. We also help with rent assistance. If somebody needs some place to stay for a while that they can't get in, we'll also help. There could be more needs because a lot of people have no idea what to expect when they finally get to return. The yards and the houses are a mess. They said there's black, there's soot. And some residents are frustrated because there was a history of fires at this facility and they had tried to complain to elected officials. That they told us it would never affect us. Well. Even though the fire is under control, the evacuation order for those nine streets around the fire scene remains in effect. And officials tell us that the evacuation centers at the Salvation Army and North Park Middle School will be open tonight for anyone who needs it. But at this point, it seems that most people have made their own arrangements. Jeff. Everybody coming together, really a bright spot in what has been a long 24 hours for folks here in the Lockport community. Ed, appreciate you. your reporting tonight. And as just, Ed just mentioned, this is not the first time that there has been a fire that has erupted at this plant. This is video of another huge fire here four years ago back in 2012 investigators ruled that fire accidental a large pile of tires were stored outside caught fire when a live power wire fell on top of them there and our coverage continues right now online with the help of witnesses and neighbors we have put together a photo gallery and a video gallery of the fire as it progressed throughout the night you can check it out right now at wkbw.com and our news app as well you know lockport mayor and McCaffrey told us today they were very quick to thank the hundreds of firefighters that have worked long hours, really put themselves at risk to battle this blaze. They expect another long night here in Lockport. For Josh Brajan and Ed Riley, live in Lockport, I'm Jeff Russo. Let's send it back to the studio. Jeff, thank you very much for your extensive coverage on this story.